I'm uh, borrowing my Google Map tool to uh, illustrate the point that Julian Corbett makes and I make about uh, limited war. Uh, as I said, since World War II, uh, the United States has been involved in four major wars uh, that have been fought as a limited war, meaning the limited objective, uh, they generally fit Julian Corbett's rules about being uh, remote, uh, being sea girt. As you can see, here is the Korean Peninsula. Uh, certainly connected to the sea, certainly remote from the United States, but there was one problem, and uh, they discovered this uh, the hard way in Korea, in that uh, it could not be fought as a limited war. And to this day, Korea is an unresolved problem, and any look at the recent news, you can confirm that for yourself. What we failed to recognize is that China, which follows this border here with North Korea, could become an adversary. And in fact, they did. And they changed the outcome of the armed conflict and forced it into a stalemate that exists to this very day. OK, move on down uh, the coast a ways to another war that uh, took about 10 years of time and a lot of people involved. That's Vietnam. Here we are in what used to be, as we knew it, in the 1960s and early 70s as South Vietnam. And uh, again, uh, it's sea girt and it's remote and it's limited, but we fail to take into consideration the strategic isolation. Uh, for anyone that was around during the 60s, they know that we did not send ground troops into North Vietnam. Uh, we treated Cambodia and Laos as quote unquote neutral nations. Uh, and that is very place in Cambodia and Laos is where the North Vietnamese put the Ho Chi Minh Trail that funneled men and supplies into the South all along the border. Uh, and for much of that period, Cambodia and Laos were safe havens. And also, uh, and at the time, the fear of uh, going into North Vietnam was, is that, oh, if we do that, China might enter on their side like they did in Korea, or even worse, uh, the Soviet Union might enter on the side of North Vietnam. And we thought we would prevent that. And in fact, what we did is we found out that it was an unwinnable war. It could not be fought as a limited war. It could only be fought as an unlimited war. All right, let's move on to more recent events. First to Iraq. Here we have Iraq. As you know from recent experience, uh, nearly 10 years in Iraq, uh, we fought that as a limited war. Remember, World War II took less than four years of all-out war, multi-theater, millions of men, and it was won in an unambiguous way in less than four years. Ten years in Iraq, if you follow today's news, you realize that the level of violence and terrorism in Iraq is at levels that uh, rival what they were in 2006, one of the worst years uh, of Sunni-Shia violence in uh, Iraq's history. Uh, so we left in 2011, and uh, we might not, uh, we might just as well have not been there. Uh, my point of this slide is to show is that if we were truly going to succeed in Iraq, we need to consider Syria here and Iran long borders with Iraq, uh, not friendly to us, and in fact, they undermined our efforts for most of the time we were there. Uh, foreign fighters, as they are commonly called, routinely streamed across the Syrian-Iraq uh, frontier, as well as uh, supplies, uh, the uh, people, all the elements that went into making the IEDs, the improvised explosive devices that were used, employed against the U.S. and NATO forces in Iraq, uh, came from Iran. Again, 
if we were going to work, uh, win in Iraq, uh, get our money's worth, uh, make the loss of blood and treasure worthwhile to succeed, we also needed to take on Syria and Iran. Now let's go to Afghanistan. Afghanistan uh, is known throughout the world as one of the few totally landlocked countries. Uh, I urge you to read in my book, uh, it shouldn't be landlocked, it should actually be connected to the sea uh, by treaty, but uh, th there's a little thing about not honoring that treaty with Pakistan, and uh, anyway, Afghanistan is landlocked. Anyway, uh, the point I show here is Afghanistan, which we are still in the midst of uh, kind of winding down, is Afghanistan as a limited war has been an unwinnable war from the beginning, mainly because we were incapable or unwilling to take on Iran, who has been undermining our efforts there for a number of years, and Pakistan. I think anyone's recognition of the history of Pakistan and currently that they're providing safe haven for a number of the Taliban in the uh, Waziristan section uh, here in these uh, lawless frontiers in uh, Pakistan recognize Pakistan is not our friend. So in order to succeed in a limited war in Afghanistan, we would have also had to go to war against Pakistan and Iran. We didn't do that and we failed. 10 years or more of failure in Afghanistan, and it was highly predictable. So to summarize, uh, Julian Corbett is essential to understanding how the United States has failed to win a war since the end of World War II. And it all comes down to something as simple and obvious, as an intuitive, as strategic isolation. That is, is the, if you're not friends with the people around your objective, then you have to assume that they're enemy. And that's what's happened in each case. We haven't taken into account those other countries. In Afghanistan, it's the case of Iran and Pakistan. In Iraq, it's the case of Syria and Iran. In the case of Vietnam, it's Cambodia, Laos, failure to use ground forces in North Vietnam. Um, in Korea, of course, China. It's a very simple concept, and it could have saved us a lot of trouble if we just followed these basic rules that Julian Corbett identified in 1911, before World War I even. This is important, and this is why we need to pay attention to the lessons of history and some of these uh, forgotten people like Julian Corbett.